The New York Times isn't read by many Brits, is it? But the writers there are clearly obsessed with us, and in particular, painting our country incorrectly as a failed state in economic and political freefall. In a thoroughly miserable piece titled The Fantasy of Brexit Britain is Over that rightly infuriated commentators this side of the Atlantic, Richard Seymour, a former member of the far-left Socialist Workers' Party, said of Blighty... Economically stagnant, socially fragmented and politically adrift, the country is being cut down to size. The right's Brexit fantasy of a revitalised Britain, freed from the shackles of Europe and able once again to confidently assert itself at home and abroad, is finished. Britain has become merely a hub for multinational corporations, uh, denuded of any wider social or civic resonance. The exit of Mr Johnson, Brexit's most charmed cheerleader, marks the demise of that fantasy. In its place, unmistakable and unstinting comes crisis. What utter rubbish. This hit job in Britain is only the latest in a long line of similar takedowns by woke America's favourite papers. Over recent years, Brexit and Boris Johnson have become prime targets for this Yankee rag with an obvious agenda to do down Great Britain. Well, to fight for this corner of this great country. Fight the corner of this great country. Actually, I've drafted in a national treasure, the Daily Mail columnist, former host of Women's Hour, Dame Jenny Murray. Look, Jenny, I'm sorry, I am sick of the New York Times obsession with doing down Britain. I mean... There's a few issues close to home for it's, him, don't you think? Yes, it, it's most bizarre. I'll tell you what I find really surprising about it. Apparently, this Richard Seymour is a Northern Irish, well-known Britophobe. Mm. You know, can't mm. stand this. But what's <laughs> bizarre is that Mark Thompson, who is the former Director General of the yeah, BBC, yeah, yeah. is now the former Chief Executive yes. of the New York Times, but he was there for a long time. What what what's he been doing? Why is he behind? Well, we all know this? why though, don't we? Because well, when he was at he the BBC, was a he turned. Well, he was, and he also turned the BBC. I would argue into what I call Jenny the British bashing corporation. You uh, might. Th- I no, know you're a former no, no, employee. No, no. You might think no, that's too I, much. I won't but I have don't. that. I won't have that. I mean, Woman's Hour was uh, very British. <laughs> yeah, but not. But and not very a lot of the committed. other content. Uh, well. I, I, but anyway, I won't, I won't anyway, have I won't, I won't, the BBC apart. <laughs> I won't you know, this round I do have because... my differences with the BBC yes. on certain yes. things, but on the whole, it's a highly yes. valuable but, organisation. But what I don't understand is the New York Times, they like to claim in the US that they're a paper of record. Well, these are just downright lies that they're now printing. Well, I would say there is a tad of the pot calling the kettle mucky. Mm. I, I, I wasn't going to use the expression that we used to use in Yorkshire. We're not allowed anymore, you, is that no, true? rude. Very rude. It is. It would have meant swearing. Um, because, you know, we are in a pickle in this country. We have no apparent government at the moment, not that I can see anyway. We have a horrific cost of living. We have no dentist, apparently. Luckily, I do have one who I've been with for 100 years uh, and still can see, uh, the NHS is desperately understaffed and, you know, airports and Dover, that's all a bit mm. chaotic, isn't it? And then, of course, there's the immigration problem. How do we deal mm. with those boats coming across? But America has a woeful health system. They're very much fatter than we are, the Americans. Are they? Yeah, much fatter than we are. Oh, I like to hear that. We don't, we don't fear... You know, we have an obesity problem, but they have a massive okay. obesity problem. We tend not to fear our kids will be gunned down when they're mm. at school, because we don't have guns. We've had a bit of a dodgy leader, but we have not had a leader who tried to mm, reverse an election or foster a coup. You know, they really cannot knock us on those kind of grounds. I refer, of course, to Donald Trump. Um, we don't deny women the right to abortion. I think that's the thing that has most shocked me recently about America. How could they not have thought, well, Roe versus Wade is not going to go on forever and ever. Mm. Let's have a proper law that enables women to have an abortion. I, I, my jaw just dropped when I read what was happening there. 
Um, I, I think neither of us are quite the great empires um, we thought ourselves uh, anymore. Um, but then this calling the kettle grimy. So, so what is it about, Jenny? Is it about liberal Americans making themselves feel better by pointing over, over the Atlantic and saying, oh, things are far worse there and painting a false picture? Because, by the way, look, we could have the debate on Brexit another time, but fundamentally, most of the issues that they point to as a Brexit issue are actually happening all around the world. If you look at the supply chain issues, and it's nothing to do with Brexit, it's to do with shutting down the economy for the past two years. Oh, and by the way, that little war in Europe is having something to do with it as well. I, I think they do say that if you're in trouble, which they are and we are, it's your friends that you tend to be rude about. <laughs> yes. You know, you, you don't slag off the Russians, frankly, because that's too scary. The Chinese are far bigger than America. So, so you, we're an easy target. We're an easy target. We're an easy and target we're for the New York Times. we're supposed to be allies. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're going to be an ally, OK. I've said horrible things about Americans sometimes and America itself. For a long time, I've said horrible things about them. But I still value the fact that mm. we are allies. Um, we are two nations divided by a common language. You know, they don't speak the language that we speak, although they think they do. Um, but allies should actually be nice to each other, yes. really. Very good point to end on.